Hello guys, so welcome again to my channel. In this video, I will discuss what is your cross bracing or X bracing and what is chevron bracing or V bracing. Okay, and in this video, I will also discuss in which case which one should be used. Okay, so let's start. And before starting, if you are new to this channel, please do subscribe because you are definitely going to be benefited in future. So, which one? Which one among these two figure is cross bracing? This one or this one? Definitely from the picture it is clear that it is cross or X bracing. Okay. And this one is known as your inverse B or Severn bracing. Okay. So now why bracing is provided in structure? You know that if the lateral load here in this structure like this or in this structure like this if lateral load is acting on these two structure like this what will happen either this structure have to be supported here in a fixed manner okay all the support should be in fixed manner or they should be braced in this case here you can see that all these support are pinned okay so if there is a pinned structure like this without any bracing and you apply any external lateral load like this what will happen this will collapse like this okay because there is no member which can resist this lateral load that's why in case of any pinned support you must have to provide the bracings okay so this is the main purpose for providing bracing in any structure clear so our first point is clear now how the load is carried to the foundation from this point to this foundation or to this foundation in case of a x bracing system let's try to visualize it okay so you are applying a load here okay then it will follow this path it will not go towards this direction okay and always remember load always follow the least path okay it always follow the least path because it follows the principle of least work okay so when you are applying the load here it will travel through this member to this point okay now definitely it will not travel to this member because if it goes towards this and again come back it will be more rather it will follow directly this path from this point to this point through this bracing okay then again from this point to this point through this bracing then from this point to this one through this bracing okay and finally from this point to this foundation through this bracing this is the force flow path okay and this is the least path and if you apply a load from this direction what will happen i am marking this in a uh, green color okay so let's say you are applying a load at this point of course first from this point to this point through this member then from this point to this point through this bracing then from this one to this one through this bracing this point to this point through this bracing and finally from this point to the foundation okay now i think it is clear to you how the force sorry the lateral force how the lateral force travel through your bracing okay so when there is a chance that from any direction your lateral load may come it is better to provide the x bracing okay and in any real cases a x bracing looks like this one here you can see okay this is pinned and this is also pinned support this is the roof beam and x bracing has been provided like this okay simply they have been provided like this now come to the second one or second part of this video that is 
the mechanism of severance brushing or inverse B. Why inverse B? A B looks like this, okay, and here in severance brushing it looks like this one, okay. So when a chevron bracing is required so before uh, discussing about chevron bracing try to visualize the force flow okay so here again let's say you are applying a load here okay this is lateral load p and remember the load will follow the least path okay so the nearest point is this one from this point to this one it will go like this and from here Definitely it will go towards this point. Okay, so from here to this point. Okay, in this point, if you simply take the component of this force, it looks like this one, one component, and this is another. So definitely this vertical component will directly go to this foundation. Okay, because this is the shortest path for this vertical component. What about this lateral load? Again, this lateral load will come to this point, and again from this point, it will go either in this direction or in this direction. Okay, so here we are assuming that from this point, it will get to this point through this member. Again, the vertical component will go to the foundation directly. Okay, and the lateral component come to this point. And from here it will directly go to the foundation okay and if you apply a load from this direction this bracing will be used okay so this is the mechanism of severance bracing now where severance bracing is required okay let's say in this case let me clear okay so let's say here you need an entrance okay so an entrance means you may use this path for your cargo movement okay or your vehicle so definitely if you use the x bracing it will create an obstruction so in that case you need to use your severan bracing here you are getting a clear path for the movement of your cargo or vehicle so there may be many reason from structural point of view and i am giving this example from a practical example in my real life okay and the main disadvantage of chevron bracing when you are using chevron bracing you need to expand more in the beams where these bracings are connected compared to this x bracing because in x bracing you can see there is no connection with the beam the beams are completely free but in case of a severance bracing the beams are get affected okay now how they are get affected just consider this simple free body diagram and let's say here we are uh, applying a single load from this side okay so from this point to this point it will come through this member and then from this point it will travel to this foundation because this is the shortest path and it may also travel this one because in this case both are equal so uh, here what will happen this is under compression and if you take the component of this compression force there is a vertical component okay like this and this vertical force is being carried by this beam itself so what you need to do you need to strengthen your beam to carry this extra vertical load clear and in real life if you look at any uh, separate bracing you can see that where this breast are connected with your beam the beam is strengthened by this vertical stiffener okay here is also here is also okay so this is the extra cost in case of your chevron bracing thanks for watching